What sunk the city worker? How did the streets of the Big Apple kill a woman in her bedroom? Why did walking her dogs cause the death of this pedestrian? How did these three die in New York? There are more ways to die than the human mind can imagine. Some are sudden and shocking. Others are slow and methodical. But every death, no matter how strange, can be explained. Even the most curious and unusual. The Bronx, New York. March 2nd, 2001. These three New York City workers have been given what seems to be an uncomplicated task. A drainage pipe in a defunct reservoir is plugged. These men have been sent to clear it. It's a dirty job. Damn, it stinks. Whew. That's right. Damn, yeah. So who's going in? With no volunteers. Odds and evens, odd man at? All right. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> That's too bad. Come on, put your boots on. I just love this. Yeah. Today, Reggie has to get in the water and steady the boat. Man, let's just drop it. The Jerome Park Reservoir was built in 1906. Its mission was to supply residents of the Bronx with drinking water. In the 1990s, it was taken offline and drained. Now, the only water filling this reservoir is three feet of stagnant rainwater. That's why Reggie's co-worker is clearing the clog. It's become a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. And as Dr. Peter Lin knows, a potential cause of the deadly West Nile virus. Mosquitoes love stagnant water. They lay eggs on that still surface of water. And it turns out the baby larvae need oxygen. So they have a little siphon tube. So this little siphon tube kind of sticks up into the water, and that's how they breathe. And so that's why, if the water is nice and calm, that's the perfect environment for them. No one living close to the reservoir wants their community to become a cesspool for disease. So that's why they were going in to try and unclog it so that we don't have this big body of water where mosquitoes could lay all their larvae eggs and then cause the West Nile to become an outbreak. Their job seems neither difficult nor dangerous. Oh. All right, go easy, go easy, go. What they didn't know is that unclogging the drain would have the unexpected consequence of creating one of nature's strongest forces. What's going on, what are you doing? A vortex. Grab, grab. A force of nature well understood by water resources engineer Richard Van Bruggen. When the drain was unplugged, you have a column of water that is all rushing in from all directions towards this small drain area. That downward pull of the water uh, is going to create a vortex similar to the way a tornado or a cyclone is formed in the atmosphere. If a lot of water is poured down a small drain, excess water starts to spin and creates a vortex. Come on, Reggie, come on, buddy, hang on. Pull, Sam, pull. And because this reservoir is holding millions of gallons of rainwater, this vortex is massive. The uh, velocity of the flow um, going down through a 20-inch diameter drain will achieve about 30 feet per second. A good swimmer can only swim about two feet per second. So uh, swimming as fast as you can away from this vortex would be of no use. Which quickly becomes obvious to Reggie and his co-workers. Once he's in the drain, uh, I don't see any way for him to be able to get out. The vortex is pulling Reggie towards the 50 centimeter drain opening. As much as he struggles, he can't resist its pull. It's very much like a water slide. 
Imagine this person's body is moving really fast down this pipe. What would happen with his organs, you know, his liver, his heart, everything is being pushed up as the body is moving so fast that the organs aren't catching up in that sense. So therefore, fluid, everything would head towards his brain. And most likely, with all that happening, he would have passed out. The might of the vortex pushes down on Reggie, sending him 200 feet through the drain. He doesn't stop until he smashes into a turn in the pipe. His bones would have probably been crushed as he, as he compressed to a full stop. Can you see him? Can you see him? An impact that has the power to kill Reggie and stop the vortex. Sam, where is he? Where is he? Reggie! A team of fire department divers will have to enter the drain through a manhole to dislodge his lifeless body. Reggie! Reggie Taylor, a New Yorker whose job was to steady the boat, but whose fate was to be rocked by a curious and unusual death. How did the streets of New York kill a woman in her bedroom? It just blew the lid off the street. Gramercy Park, New York, August 19th, 1989. Rachel Cooper is 29 years old. She lives on the island of Manhattan. And like most New Yorkers, she rents. Her third story apartment may be modest, even by New York standards. But her neighborhood is one of the most well-maintained in the city. Today, workers are heading underground to repair its steam system, which, according to urban historian James Nevis, is always in need of attention. Every single day of the year, some portion of New York City is being dug up, and someone is going down to work on a water main or to work on steam or electricity. Uh, it is a constant project. It's not only one of the biggest systems in the world, it's one of the oldest. New York has been pumping out steam since the late 1800s. Steam heat is very important to New York, and it really hit its stride in the 1930s and 40s. So the iconic structures in New York, like the Empire State Building and Rockefeller Center and the United Nations, all use the steam system, both for their heating and their cooling. A system this old breaks down a lot, and working under these New York streets is never easy. You all right down there? Working with New York's infrastructure is an inherently risky business because whether it's steam or water or electricity, there's so much that could go wrong. As Rachel settles down for an afternoon nap, she has no idea how a routine repair could destroy her sleep. Workers usually head underground because of broken water mains according to engineer Philip O'Keefe. The primary need for maintenance is due to water leaks um, from, from water mains in the vicinity of the steam pipes. Leaking water drips onto the steam pipes, causing them to cool. The steam condenses into water, and it becomes useless as a power source. It can create a lot of problems for people that are tapped into the central heating system. People like Rachel Cooper who rely on steam to heat their homes. These repairmen need to get it back online and fast. Found it. Came up with good work. First, they find and repair the leak. Next, they must drain any water that has been pooled. Finally, they open the valves and let the steam back in. It could take anywhere from a few hours to uh, perhaps even days. Depends on how severe the leak is and what has to be replaced. Good to go. Cool. It's been several hours, and the workers are calling it a day. They have done their job, they think. But they've forgotten one crucial step, to drain the pipe. Now, thousands of pounds of superheated steam is about to crash into thousands of gallons of trapped water. 
As Rachel slips deeper into sleep, she's unaware that a bomb is about to go off. Coming up, how did a leaking water pipe turn into one of the biggest steam explosions of all time? It's basically like a freight train crash. Manhattan resident Rachel Cooper was just settling in for an afternoon nap as city workers finished their repairs on a broken water main that had been leaking onto a steam pipe. All they have to do now is reopen the valve to allow steam back into the system. When the work was done, the workmen had forgotten to drain the water out of the pipe that had condensed. You should have a procedure in place as a worker to drain the pipe before you open the steam valve. This one mistake puts in motion a deadly chain reaction. Mass amounts of steam head straight towards the water the workers have forgotten to drain, creating a phenomenon known as water hammer. You probably experienced water hammer um, when you've lived in an old house with steam pipes. It sounds like somebody's beating on the system with a pipe wrench or a hammer, uh, hence the name. It's pretty much just an annoyance. When we're talking about an industrial type of a system, you have a lot more volume of steam that's moving at much higher speeds. Water hammer can result in some very destructive forces. The workers hear the rumblings of something going terribly wrong. It's basically like a, a freight train crashing into a, a pipe elbow or a valve or an expansion joint. They are unaware of the magnitude of their mistake. They just know to run as far as they can in the opposite direction. The steam just slams into that slug of water and drives it forward, and that will literally uh, send a slug of water traveling at very high speed into uh, pieces of the pipe and cause a massive explosion. The impact of the water hammer blows open the steam pipe allowing thousands of pounds of highly pressurized steam to escape. The steam is traveling at 75 miles an hour. It caused a crater 20 feet wide. It blows upwards, taking everything in its path, even the pavement. So much pressure going through such a small area, it just blew the lid off the street. The explosion kills both utility workers and injures 23 others. There is only one other fatality. Inside her apartment, Rachel Cooper had been peacefully sleeping until a violent sound had awoken her, followed by a shower of mud and rocks. Rachel Cooper thought she'd rented her dream apartment, never realizing that what she really held the lease on was a curious and unusual death. Coming up, how did walking the dog... She fell, she's on the ground. ...turn deadly? East Village, New York, January 16th, 2004. Laura Bell is 30 years old. She's a scholar wrapping up a doctoral degree at Columbia University. For Laura, the only thing more precious than her studies are her dogs. When it's time for a break, she loves taking them for a walk through her neighborhood, one of the best in New York. But something unseen has turned these normally safe streets 
deadly. Frank Didick is well acquainted with the complex networks that run beneath the streets of New York. Well, it's really quite amazing. New York City has over 70,000 miles of electric cables underground. Tunnels completely filled with heavy wiring ranging from two centimeters to perhaps three or four centimeters thick. It's just a complete spaghetti of wiring. All this wiring is housed inside utility vaults. There are thousands of these boxes buried beneath New York streets. Most are capped with a simple metal plate. Under normal conditions, it's perfectly safe. It's part of street architecture. You simply don't notice it. Uh, when you're crossing the street, very few people worry about uh, manhole covers or utility vaults. So a person walking would not have thought of the plate as being dangerous in any respect. Laura Bell is crossing the street like she's done hundreds of times before. But the moment her dogs step onto the utility cover, they go wild. <laughs> Dangers occur in the electric system when the insulation on the cables deteriorates. The wires are not still. They actually move with contraction and expansion, cold and warmth, and they move around like snakes. As exposed wires dance, they touch the side and tops of the cover, electrifying the entire grate, a hazard well understood by forensic pathologist Dr. John Butt. Electricity is not all that complicated. The first thing is you have to have a source of power and you have to have a conductor. As long as there are electrons that can move, there's the potential for electrical conduction. Every time one of her dogs steps onto the grate, they receive a powerful charge. But Laura has no way of knowing what's happening. You cannot smell electricity, you cannot see electricity, you, you can't taste it. So there's no way that a person can actually uh, determine if something on the street is dangerously electrified. All Laura can do is try to settle her dogs. She attempted to pull the dogs towards her to see what was happening. The dogs started acting in a very peculiar fashion. She didn't know what was going on. Her dogs are now so out of control, she asks for help. One of her dogs collapses, which saves its life, because it's no longer receiving a shock. Oh, my God! The shock now is all Laura's. She fell, she's on the ground, she's grounded, and she fell onto something metal that is a conductor. She is now receiving over 100 volts of electricity, but it's not the voltage killing her. You can have uh, 200,000 volts going to a person, but if the amperage is, is very low, it'll only make their hair stand up. It's really the amperage that kills the person. Amperage, or current, measures electrical strength. Up to 210 amps flow under these streets, a thousand times more than is needed to kill a person. The current passes through the body, and it affects the heart. And none of the reactions in the heart move blood, which can kill within a matter of a minute. Pedestrians nearby try to help. Two police officers rush to the scene. but they all receive a massive jolt. So they call 911. If you don't start cardiopulmonary resuscitation immediately and begin circulation to the brain, you begin to run into extremely serious problems, including death. 15 minutes in, the emergency crew arrives. It was not until a particular EMS truck came. They used the plastic gurney to lift her off. Plastic does not conduct electricity, so the paramedics can move her without getting shocked. But it's too late. Her heart gives out. Laura Bell loved the city's special charge, never realizing that what made New York electric would also lead to a curious and unusual death.
New York, a city like no other, where unclogging the drain is full of surprises. Just taking a nap can be explosive. And walking your dog can be shocking. The New York City worker, the New York napper, and the New York dog walker. They all took a bite of the Big Apple, but all they tasted was a curious and unusual death.